single incident that did change your mind about taking that risk and speaking out? It's not one single incident. No, it's two years that I served in the West Bank. That I, what I experienced and things that I've done. From bursting into houses in the middle of the night and seeing the families and how they react, till manning checkpoints, arrest operations and other things that I've done. It's a whole package. And when you reached that point, were you revolted by what you had witnessed? I mean, once you started to explore all those past incidences, did you start rethinking the whole package? Yeah, definitely yes. I think mainly for me was learning things about myself way before about the big politics. Um, I went through my service believing that I'm a good guy and that we are the good side. And suddenly I discovered what we've done and what I took part in. And that's why I felt that I need to do something. I realized that there was a need for them to get them, to get them, to get them. To get them means to get them, 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 to get them. And in breaking the silence, we are over 950 combat soldiers who say, occupation, no. Yeah, that is wrong. This is not the path to go. Is it possible for an Israeli soldier to serve in the territories with a clear conscience? I don't believe that a soldier who served in the occupied territories has clean hands. It's not that I think that we are all, you know, it's not that we, every soldier murders innocent Palestinians, far away from that. But no Israeli soldier who served in the occupied territories, his hands were clean after that. Because at the heart of what you do, there is no way of seeing Palestinians as equal human beings to you. I'll just give you one example, which is, you know, nothing extreme, nothing exceptional, something very routine and banal. I served for 14 months in Hebron. Right now in Hebron, as we are sitting here and having this discussion, there are two military patrols that their job is to do what we call in the military to make our presence felt. What does it mean? The military logic says this. If Palestinians will get the feeling that the IDF is all the time everywhere, they'll be afraid to attack. So what do you do to give them this feeling? You make your presence felt. You start your night shift patrol. 10 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the morning, eight hour shift. You walk in the streets of the old city of Hebron, break into a house, Palestinian house of course, not a house we have intelligence about. I'm the sergeant, I lead the patrol, I choose a random house, wake up the family, men one side, women the other side, search the place, you can yourself imagine the dynamics, yeah? Climb to the roof, jump from one roof to another, come out through another house, wake the family, and basically that's how you pass your eight hour shift, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, from September 2000 when the second Intifada started, till today, now. It didn't stop for one second. Yeah, the idea is that every Palestinian will feel the military is right here. You don't know when we're gonna show up, what we're gonna do, when it's gonna end, how it's gonna look like. It's to do what we call in the military, to create the feeling of being persecuted. Now, when this is your mission, again, this is not an action of a rogue soldier or officer. This is your mission. There is no way of doing it nice.